In the Panacony storyline, we meet our very first emanator of Nihility, Akron. Many throughout the story, including Akron herself, confirms that she is indeed an emanator. But then, Akron also says that IX isn't one to care about those that follow Nihility and would never gaze upon anyone to grant them power. It is in their nature to not care, given Nihility is all about the pointlessness of existence. So if IX doesn't care, then how does one even gain these powers because Akron clearly has them? If you willingly chose to follow Nihility, does the act itself give you purpose and thus make your endeavours not truly pointless, which then goes against the idea of Nihility? It seems just a little bit confusing, and I'm sure some of you have wondered this very thing. So in this video, I want to explore the paradoxical nature of the path of Nihility, and I'll try my best to explain this rather confusing contradiction that exists in one of the more interesting paths. If one cannot choose Nihility, how does one truly become a follower of it? Before we dive into the nothingness of IX, if you want to see more Hawkeye serial content, do consider subscribing to the channel. Before we embark on the nuts and bolts of this topic, I need to put out a few disclaimers. Firstly, I'm going to be using a few terms that may have overlapping meanings between themselves, such as despair, depression, and nihility. These terms are not necessarily interchangeable, but they each represent an aspect of the path of nihility in their own specific way. So just know that if I use these terms, they ultimately refer to nihility as a whole. Secondly, this is nothing more than a personal interpretation of this topic. Starrail's lore can get a bit confusing and complicated, and truth be told, I might just get some things wrong here, so just keep that in mind. Now, what makes Nihility unique, and also why this video is titled as such, is that from what we've learned, nobody actually chooses to tread the path of Nihility. It's not a conscious choice one makes, but rather something that unknowingly happens to you as a result of your other choices, or perhaps even your circumstances. If we look at other paths, treading on them can be based on a choice that you actively or consciously make. You resonate with destruction because perhaps you like destroying things, or if you align with its main belief, which is that the universe is a mistake and that it should be destroyed. The more in line you are with this primary idea or purpose, the more you resonate with the path itself. Even if you don't follow it exactly, exemplifying traits of destruction can also grant you access to the path itself. The Annihilation Gang is a good example of this. Most other paths follow the same formula. Erudition is the home to any and all who pursue knowledge, and the trailblazing accepts any who wish to venture into the unknown. Any path you follow can be born from a self-actualized choice, and is often driven by a specific purpose you might inherently have. Nihility is the only one, as far as I know, that doesn't really work this way. In addition, the more you choose to follow Nihility, the more purpose that very choice develops, and by doing this, you kinda oppose the concept of Nihility itself. You cannot choose to do so because it simply contradicts the main edicts of Nihility, and very few would willingly wallow in despair. If choosing to follow it inadvertently gives you a sense of purpose, whether you realize it or not, it means that existence is not truly pointless. The only way for you to actually join Nihility is to realize that life itself is pointless and only then do you somewhat become a follower. Instead of purpose driving you, it's actually your circumstances that dictate if you end up as a follower of the path of Nihility. As far as I know, no other path functions in this way and why Nihility is incredibly unique because its members aren't truly members. They don't want to be there but can't help feeling the way they do. It's kind of like free membership for realizing something you'd rather be ignorant about. This seems to be true when we examine the factions that follow Nihility. Now, Device 9 is just shrouded in mystery, so we'll just ignore them, but the Doctors of Chaos and the Self Annihilators are both described in similar ways. They each realize the pointlessness of it all, and only then did they begin to walk on the path of Nihility. For example, the Self Annihilators often start off with an unfortunate circumstance tread the path of Nihility, and progressively become lesser versions of themselves as they begin to deteriorate. Acheron, for example, fought countless years to save her planet, only to have it swallowed up by the shadow of Ix. Only after this did she begin to literally lose parts of herself, like her sense of taste, memory, and who knows what else. Other self-annihilators are described quite similarly, and for most, they often die a meaningless death. 
The Doctors of Chaos are the exception, as they have somehow managed to rise above the despair and are functionally living contradictions in that they still see the pointlessness of existence, but also the beauty in that, while the self-annihilators are just decomposing day by day. I kind of think that most start off as self-annihilators, and if they can move past it, either delve deeper in nihility like Akron or become one of the Doctors of Chaos. While we do know situations exist where people within Staril's universe can fall into despair either because their planet has been decimated or they experience a traumatic event, there are also those that see the pointlessness of the universe purely due to interactions with IX. Many of those described to fall into the shadow of IX inevitably become unwilling followers, as experiencing despair instantly allows them access to nihility simply because they too see a glimpse of the pointlessness. The point is that just dipping your toes into despair or experiencing it firsthand due to your life circumstance is how one falls onto the path and eventually become past riders for it. It's not something you might actively choose. Those who tread this path while at the same time retaining their sanity are likely those that end up gaining the ability to wield the path itself. This might explain how Akron can become an emanator despite herself claiming that IX does not cast its gaze on anyone. She has spent so much time experiencing the pointlessness of the universe that she has dove deeper into the path itself, but her strong will allows her to continue moving forward without falling fully into despair. It's sort of like she toes the line between accepting the pointlessness, but also hopeful that there is something more, and her travels through the cosmos pretty much showcases this. We see her get involved with many people, such as the Nameless who wish to explore Nihility and Tiernan, only to see them live unfulfilling lives or have unrealized dreams that further pushes her into the realization of how pointless the universe truly is. During the cutscene with Tiernan, where she spent years witnessing him and the Sin Thirsters descent into emptiness, she herself says it's an ultimately pointless act when asked by Tiernan's shadow why she chose to accompany him. This slightly hints at how Akron was able to achieve the status of Emanator, through experiencing the pointlessness of it all over and over again. Each time she does, she dives deeper into the endless well of despair the path of Nihility is, while at the same time able to wield more and more of it. Again, the point I'm trying to make is that given Nihility is about pointlessness, Choosing to follow it makes you contradict that very ideal, and the only way to access it is by realizing first the pointlessness of everything. Most that follow nihility are those that accept the pointlessness of existence due to their circumstances or past experiences. Akron, for example, might seem hopeful, but everything she has experienced prove otherwise. There's plenty of other examples as well. Perhaps you are the lone survivor from a world ravaged by Tazeront or Ouroboros. Perhaps your son got destroyed by Nanook. Perhaps the abundance came to your world and consumed all its resources. There's no shortage of despair in this universe, and the people that suffer from these circumstances are those who end up on the path of nihility. Those with strong wills who encounter misfortune can overcome it by strengthening their resolve and channeling their despair into anger or vengeance. But for the common man, what else can you do if your planet is about to be destroyed? You simply fall into hopelessness. Even Akron herself, despite all her effort, you can kind of see it in her eyes that she's on the verge of just giving up and likely wants someone to just prove her wrong. This is perhaps why IX's influence is said to stretch to every shadow of the universe. Out of 100 people, one might rise to become a hero when faced with adversity, while the rest are more likely to fall into despair and just give up. Not everybody believes in destruction or remembrance, but there is always an endless sea of candidates who can easily fall into despair. Imagine those who can't fulfill their dreams or achieve their goals. How about the people that have lost someone close to them or maybe done something they regret? To fall into the maw of despair is really easy, and it often happens without one realizing. Perhaps this is why IX is modeled after a black hole. It feels vast, silent, and unassuming, but once you fall past the event horizon, there is no turning back, and the realization of pointlessness is exactly like that. This is what makes Nihility the path that nobody follows willingly, and why IX might be one of the strongest eons as its influence stretches far beyond the limits of distance or time. As you fall deeper into despair and realize the pointlessness of the universe, IX will still not notice you, but Nihility will slowly but surely embrace you. I'll end the video here before this gets beyond the point of depressing. 
Now, just remember, this is just one interpretation and truth be told, a lot of this can really just be semantics or how you read into the explanation. So don't take it too seriously and consider this as a definitive explanation behind nihility or something. Do you think that nihility is just where all the unfortunate souls end up or is IX perhaps not as influential as I may have made them seem? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed watching the video, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching and as usual, have a nice day.